We back. We back. We all the way back, man. Smack water back in the green room, man. Shout out to Trill Burgers, man. I see you representing, man. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Bun and Trill Burger. For sure. We were just up there. Uh, shout out to Twisted Black also. He just was down here. Twisted Black from Funky Town, if you don't know. Uh, he was real hot around t the early 2000s. And uh, even had a major deal then. Fucked around and caught a Fed case. And they slam dunked him, I think. I think they gave him like 25 or something fed, but he stood on business, man. He stood on his square, stayed down, and he took it on the chin like a real live nigga would, a real live nigga supposed to, and came home. And he was just down. Him and Bun got a badass song. They just shot a video for it. And uh, he seen me, and he, you know, said he was a fan. And I told let him know that I'm a fan of him as a man. I just ain't, uh, I didn't heard it, some of his music, but I just ain't up on it like that. But as a man, I'm a fan, you know, as a real nigga for what, how you stood on your shit. Definitely. I'm a fan. Yeah. Hell yeah. Man, you always represent, man. You, you always at the events in Houston. You showing love every time somebody puts something together. You know what I'm saying? I try to, man. I try to lend my face and uh, name to uh, causes because on the outside looking in, things always look different than what they really are inside of somebody's house. You know what I'm saying? Like you look you on the outside, but you don't see like when the doors close or when you're not there to argue and the fuss and the fighting and the house about to fall down, the people about to split up. And Houston, Houston look way more united from the outside than we are on the inside. And so I try to I try to always be of some service if possible if niggas if i ain't got nothing going on and niggas call me to be a part of something that they got going on and i can make it and it's sensible you know and it don't even have to do anything with any money or anything you know i don't look for money and, and or instant gratification i need some immediately to do something for somebody or to, to show up because I'm gonna get mine. I I do a lot of shit for niggas, man. Like I really do. I I bring niggas up when they ain't in the room. You know what I'm saying? I try to help further niggas' career without them knowing. I do a lot of shit. I, Cause you know, you consider yourself like a glue guy. Like you know, say they say a guy who's the glue guy keeps everybody together. Kind of. I, I I don't know. Okay, I can't okay. really say. I I just I try to be helpful and I try to uh build. And I try to be more constructive than destructive because I've been destructive enough in my past. So at this point in life, I try to leave every situation better than what I found it. I try to, at least. That's that's what my head and heart is at with everything and every endeavor. I don't I don't want to leave something and it be fucked up. I feel that. I feel yeah. that. You definitely uh I would say a pillar in the Houston like rap community, entertainment community, you know, the influencer community. Definitely. Do you agree? Uh, influence, you know, I do my music and, you know, who fuck with it, fuck with it. I really don't know who fuck with it. You know, it ain't like I'm in in the trunks and in the streets like that there. But whoever I appreciate, whoever do fuck, but I know I know it's motherfuckers that fuck with it because, you know, I, a couple niggas run up on me and they quote lines or they tell me about a song, or, uh, you know. I just ain't, you know, as as uh, recognizable as Thugger or, or Pow Wow or, you know, j Dog, Fast Lane, you know. Facts. Cartel Bo and, and uh, Cartel Bo blazing right now. T.G. Gates and Bebe picking up steam. Uh, and why I say them niggas' name, man, let me tell you bitch-ass DJ something, man, because I'm really sick and tired of you cake-ass niggas, for real. So, T.G. Gates and Bebe got a song that's jamming, and I be going up to DJs asking y'all niggas, man, y'all heard that T.G. Gates and, and Bebe song? And, and every last one of them, y'all know about the song. And they be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. Some of them be like, yeah, that bitch jamming. Well, why you ain't playing it then, my nigga? Why the fuck ain't you playing it? Then you'll turn around and tell a nigga, come to the club. Why the fuck do I need to come to the club for you to play my shit? The motherfucking Drake Migos, 
All these other niggas, whoever you playing right now, whoever record you spinning right now, that nigga ain't in the club. Why the fuck do I got to come to the club for you to play my record? If it jam, play the motherfucking record, cake ass nigga. You just, what the fuck is that, man? That shit, that is some of the weakest shit that you niggas do, my nigga. Y'all niggas, it's like y'all be really hating and trying to hold. Why not push the culture forward, Houston culture forward, my nigga? You nigga, you want to know why you ain't really getting no money as a DJ, my nigga? Because you ain't breaking no records, my nigga. If you get known for breaking records, niggas will bring you their record and put some money in your pocket because they know what you going to do. They know what your capabilities are. But you niggas ain't doing that. You niggas is, is you niggas got the culture just fucked up, man. Y'all making shit hard, way harder than it gotta be for every motherfucking body, man. Niggas got they ass on their shoulders. Niggas got these little bullshit ass egos. Everybody think they bigger than they really fucking is, my nigga. More important than you are, my nigga. Man, y'all niggas. Y'all be on some old bitch ass shit, my nigga. Really, I don't know how you niggas do. I don't know how niggas look in the mirror, man. I don't know how it feel to wake up and look in the mirror and see a whole ass nigga. Yeah. Right I shit. don't, my nigga. Because I've I been keeping it G my entire fucking life, my nigga. That shit rare nowadays. That shit. That's, my, that's a core belief of mine. So that's just what it, that's what you going to get. When you deal with me, you might not like it, but you gonna respect it because you gonna know that Smack ain't lied to you, Smack ain't try to mislead you, Smack ain't try to fuck over you, he ain't try to do none of that. All I did was keep it real with you, and you niggas ain't out here keeping it real, man. Nigga, y'all ain't even keeping it real with the city. Y'all claim to love the city. I can't tell. You claim to love the culture. I can't tell. Your actions speak way louder than that bitch ass shit what you talking about. You niggas ain't doing a bitch ass thing for the city. Fuck you niggas. I feel you. Where you okay? Earlier though, you kind of spoke on how you feel like Houston is looking good and you know it's got togetherness, but it's still a few leaks. You feel a little few cracks. Well, in Houston again. ain't. It's it's Houston. We got our togetherness. Don't get me wrong, but. And I uh, see one thing I do, I understand. Like as an artist, niggas would be quick to say somebody hating on them because they ain't doing this or doing that. But a lot of niggas ain't putting the work in. Now, I'm, I'm not telling y'all the DJs I'm, and anybody else, but I, I don't want the DJs to get it misconstrued. Like, damn, smack just, but I'm not telling y'all to, to patronize somebody that's not putting the work in. And a lot of niggas don't put the work in, but yet say somebody hating on them or somebody's holding them back or somebody's stopping them. No, you ain't putting the work in, bitch ass nigga. T.G. Gates and Baby is putting the work in. So y'all should be playing them niggas motherfucking record with no problem. Cause you see these niggas out here working. You see these niggas trying to, trying to do something and shine and, and, and they, they doing it, my nigga. But you niggas is being a hindrance. Not for a nigga that's not working and a nigga that's, that just thinks some shit's supposed to come easy. Fuck no. Cause I, I, I always was a nigga that worked. I just didn't understand to what degree you had to work. No, if a nigga, you got to have rubber to the road, feet to the concrete. And and if you see a motherfucker like that, man, don't don't just fuck with a nigga because he got motion and all this whole ass shit. Uh, nigga, man, fuck with a nigga because it's it's genuine and it's authentic. And I understand it being beneficial. Shit got to be beneficial. It got to make sense. I understand. But sometimes you just got to do shit. Because it's the right thing to do. It's the real thing to do, my nigga. Everything don't have to come with a price tag or a financial status or, or some attached to it. Some shit is just the real shit to do. And the payoff is being real. And some gonna come down, some real gonna come down the pipe for you later on because you kept it real right here.
But as long as motherfuckers keep looking for the here and now, and what if I don't got nothing right now for it, you know, and that's that stagnates shit. That's that's where shit stops at, and, and it becomes obstacles that shouldn't even be in the path. Niggas creating their own obstacles. Real shit. What are what are, what would you say are some signs of? What would you say are some signs of? Yeah, somebody's really putting in that work. Like some things you say. To take notice, like, okay, you did this, you did that. Here in the city, yeah, you 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 really cracking the threshold. What are some signs? You see a nigga, I, whatever it is that that you say you represent, if you in the mix of it. If you say you represent the streets and wherever the streets congregate at, if you in the mix, you putting in work. Don't say that you represent this, but you're never around it. You know what I'm saying? That shit don't that shit don't add up. And the people got to stop falling for that bitch ass shit on every level. OK, every level. Motherfucker, motherfucker can't represent you if a motherfucker ain't never around you. And in your motherfucker, these rich ass celebrities acting like they speaking for the everyday coming man. When was the last time you seen one of them bitch ass niggas? And I ain't talking about seeing them when they come in to do a show or when they come in to, to try to persuade you on some shit. I'm talking about just being a, a genuine, authentic, regular motherfucker. Yeah. I ain't even talking, you ain't just even got to necessarily come to the hood to give the hood something. Yo, just your presence can give the hood hope. Just you being that, just being a real, regular motherfucker. That's when you represent something. That's when you show that you got empathy towards a situation. You can't have empathy for me, bitch ass nigga, if you ain't been around this society and this community in 10, 15, 20 years. The fuck out of here, man. You gotta be frequent. Gotta be some frequency. It got to be something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You see a lot of that going on though? Like people who ain't really just Fuck, oh yeah, on every level. Yeah. From from the from the streets all the way up to the politicians to all that shit, man. Everybody always talking like they represent this or they are with that or they all this bitch ass shit and nigga, where are you? Like Jeff Shelley, nigga, who are you? Nigga, where are you? Who are you? Yeah. A lot of niggas be out here. At McDonald's with a suit on, cooking French fries like they really <laughs> in the mix, you know what I mean? Damn. They got a briefcase. Up. Donald Trump in that shit. Yeah, man. And well, <laughs> I, I can understand if you're doing that because shit. We like I said, we was just at at Trill Burger. Me, Twisted Black, Bun. They shooting a video and nigga, everything that everybody, all the workers was doing. I told Bun, I say, nigga, you do everything in this bitch. He cleared the tape. That nigga, I thought that nigga was finna get on his hands and knees and go to scrubbing the floor for a hot second. God damn, Bun, you do everything. Much but, respect, man. Yeah, but but at, like you say, much respect. At the same time, that garners a different level of respect from people that's coming to that shop like, nah, nigga, this is, uh, this is what it is right here. I ain't, even though I'm the boss, I still ain't no bigger or no smaller than the biggest or smallest person here. Facts. We all gonna be on the same. You answer to me, I sign your check, but I ain't too big or too proud to do your job. So don't you get it fucked up and don't you get your bitch ass fired, cake ass nigga. Thank because <laughs> I can't do this. I can do the same don't shit. Don't get it you twisted. Do. Yeah. But I feel that. I'll come work this motherfucking grill just like you will. Right. In my lifetime of employing people, I always tell people, man, you're working with me, not for me. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But, and, you know, it's always good to learn every aspect of the business. That's the most successful motherfuckers. They know their business in and out. See, you got to understand the, the motherfucker who worked the least on a job get paid the most. But why? Because they getting paid for what they know, not what they can do. Yeah. Because if it's a leak or something and bust and I, I got the knowledge and I could tell you exactly what it is and you could go fix it in five minutes. Or you could have a motherfucker that don't know nothing and now they tearing all this shit up, taking all this shit apart and the shit only costed $50 but now it didn't turn into a $500,000 job. Yeah. Because you ain't had the right information. Yeah. yeah. And you was paying me 80000 
But now, nah, fuck that. That's too much. Now you got a job of 500000 or uh, five, six times what you pay me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why shit is like that. If you don't bid, and that's the problem with a lot of niggas. A lot of niggas don't want to grind. They want to shine. Mm. Niggas do not want to grind. They just want to shine. And I understand because you look at the videos, you look at so everybody on there got stacks of money to the everybody want the end result. Don't nobody give a fuck about what it go, what it takes, what you got to go through to get there. Don't nobody care. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about that less than a funky bitch. <laughs> Man, it, I feel like you're so right. But then also the thing that scares me the most is like that caring more about the shine and the grind is, you know, if you really look at shit, it's starting to become the essence of American culture. Everywhere. Yeah, because niggas lead the forefront of every movement. Mm. Niggas is at the forefront of every fucking movement. Once a nigga co-sign it, this is what it is, my nigga. That's why they try to uh, get all these bitch-ass niggas to jump on that ho that uh, homosexuality bandwagon. Because if we could get these niggas, niggas got a way of making down there anything look cool and acceptable. Even, even the most fucked up shit. Nigga, energy is something else. Yeah. It's not to be reckoned with. Yeah, at all. Nig niggas is making snitching on yourself cool. All these little young niggas is actually talking about real motherfucking murder cases and bragging on it and giving details. Nigga, and I heard in some saw motherfuckers say you bragging on bodies that ain't yours, even if the body really ain't yours. Nigga, you offered up information or you got some information and the laws come snatch you bitch ass nigga what you know now i ain't know that nigga you say the nigga was shot six times in his left leg nigga how the fuck you mean you don't know nothing yeah you giving details nigga if you the thing about hip-hop used to be uh, especially when it came to, to street music is giving details without giving details. It was like a code. If yeah. you knew, you knew. You, you knew. Yeah. But you saying it in a way like niggas like, oh, that's some real shit. But it ain't, you ain't, but these niggas just flat out, you know, these niggas is flat out. And, you know, niggas, niggas go kill a nigga and, and go to the studio and just kill him for sport. Damn. Just to, so they have something to rap about. That's definitely a wave right now. It's been a wave, I would say, for the past decade. But it's, it's nigga trying to kill a nigga so he could have something to rap about. Then you ain't got no life. Maybe you don't need to be rabbit, brother. Maybe you need to go put on a suit and fry some French fries, bitch ass nigga. <laughs> Man, I know you've been a fan of rap for a long time. My entire life. And you've been here, you probably heard some wild shit. But speaking on these newer wave songs that's like giving too much details, can you think of a song from your memory or a song that you heard that was like, Nigga, what? What is you? Why is you saying this? Even if it's a new song, an old song. It's just really these new niggas. But at the, when I was younger, what I will say is, younger, we we ushered in giving the game up. I got to be honest, you know, niggas, cause laws didn't know niggas was stashing dope here. Laws didn't know it's dope in the tire and shit. And niggas put it in the rap song. And the cold part about it is. The niggas who was rapping about it really wasn't even doing it. They was just in the room with the niggas doing it, and they was talking about it. And like like how Ice Cube got my summer vacation from one of his partners. Because this was some shit they did. And, and us being musicians, you know, we able to take some shit that motherfuckers say and, and script it and, and make it so... So, so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We can vivid. put, yeah, vivid. We can make, yeah. that's the word. We can make it so vivid and bring it to life and tell it like it's really our story. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's a bunch of motherfuckers used to do that and, and really not aware that, nigga, you, you giving the game a black eye. Yeah. Yeah. To be sold, not told. Yeah. yeah. But they were selling it. Making millions, selling it. But niggas is getting bust in the meantime because not a laws know to, nigga, if you hit the brakes, hit the blights, and voila, there go them bricks. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I would say definitely, man. Over the years, as I listen, I've been, a, I'm a, like yourself, I'm a fan of hip hop from the beginning to the end. You know what I'm saying? And it's, even from the years before me, I loved it so much, I make sure to go back and listen to the shit before me so I know what I'm talking about. But yeah, they, they telling it right now. Man, I'm niggas telling, telling. Telling, telling. Man, I'm glad you said that because it, it, of course, leads me into another topic. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk about the telling, but then I even have more greater mountains to climb. But do you see how the snitch culture is becoming like extremely fabricated now? Not necessarily fabricated. Not nah, acceptable. Sense. Yeah, Coming that's extremely the acceptable, celebrated, glorified. And uh, so now niggas can just be bitch ass niggas openly. Yeah. I ain't, you know, I ain't got to hide being a bitch ass nigga. Yeah, they got told nigga, fuck it. That's crazy. Yeah, it, niggas just being bitch ass niggas in the open now. It don't even matter, my nigga. Hey, you know, the, the, the one of the, I was, the, he's considered the biggest black uh, dope kingpin ever, Big Meats. A lot of niggas, at, hey man, I I know me personally. I haven't been to the feds. I know a little bit. I don't know a lot. If it, if you if it's you versus the state of Texas, hit me up, nigga. I can give you some game on, on you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but if it's you versus the United States, states of America, I, I'm I'm on the sidelines watching, just like the majority of motherfuckers. So I got three niggas I talk to that's vets. One been twice. One had a 20 piece that he walked down, and one had a 25 piece that he walked down. These niggas know that shit in and out, my nigga. And them other niggas, before I even made that post, I went and hollered at them niggas and talked to them on the phone, my nigga, because I wanted to know what they felt, what they thought. Was it any uh, cracks in the cement? Was it was it was it fabricated? Was it being blown out of proportion? What? And all them niggas, uh, well, I talked to one on the phone first, then I went in and seen him. But they looked me right in my eyes, my nigga, and they ain't flint. And these are some stand up, like I say, these niggas walk feds, the feds time. Yeah. Looked it in the eye, nigga ain't flinch. Ain't ain't nothing. Ain't fold, ain't nothing. Nigga ain't nothing to talk about. And them niggas walked it down. One of them, and because he say, man, we talked on the phone a little bit, but he said some shit I want to tell you. Come, and I say, man, I'm going to come holler at you. So I'm going to tell you like a nigga told me. He said that, that everybody already knew they got down when they signed for their time. Say, them niggas, case, warrant, kingpin, Rico, automatic life. They signed for 30. So everybody was already like, what is this? He did 16 years. Big Meeks yeah, did 16 Yeah, years. but what, this is what I'm saying. Their case warrants life in the feds. Rico, automatic life. And so the thing with the feds is that the feds has always been, has never changed, and the feds has always been a minimum 85% of your time. Yeah, so let me break it down. Yeah. Their case, they come in with life. Ain't no, what, let me tell you what the feds don't do. The feds don't do deals. It's only one way to get a deal in the feds. That's the snitch. That's to tell something. That's the only, the feds don't, it's not like the state where the lawyers say they offering you 30 and you be like, nigga, you got me fucked up. You better tell them, you get, nigga, go in there and get me something I can do. And they come back and say, okay, they knocked it down to seven. That's not what the feds do, nigga. The feds got stipulations and guidelines, strict stipulations and guidelines that they adhere to. They got a point system. They got a time, your time is all, uh, because the time you get depends on how many points you violated. And this, if they say it's between 240 months and 360 months, you could do anything from the high end to the low end. But you going to do somewhere between 240 months and 360 months. It ain't no negotiation. 
If on, you on that type on a kingpin nah, Rico job. where the kingpin Rico is light. Like, like, okay. But any fair case, you're gonna do yeah. whatever they guidelines say mm -hmm. it is. Ain't no to go. If you get anything under that, everybody know you told something. Yeah, yeah. Within that frame, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you what some real live stand-up vets told me. And they knew that it wasn't right when they got there. And it, it blew my mind because I never thought about that. Blew my mind. I was standing there really trying to piece it together in my mind like I never even looked. But see, when you don't, when you don't play in certain waters, you don't get wet. I ain't never played in them water, so, you know, I got real nigga vision and I got a lot of common sense. But then that you still got to have knowledge to accommodate a lot of stuff. And I didn't have I don't didn't have the full knowledge of the feds like a lot of do. He his name ain't on no paperwork. Rule 35 says your name don't got to be on paperwork. Mm. So you feel like the paperwork thing is like almost a myth to niggas. Well, oh. that's for that's for direct. He third party cooperated. That's for direct. Hey, man, you go. That's like when they catch you. But my my G said he know he say he willing to bet a million to a dollar that they got seal pay because they he say they had to get down coming in yeah. to get 30 years. They had to get down. So they course, probably got a course. seal case out there. That makes sense. I'm not saying that's for sure, but that makes sense. You look at pictures sure. of Big Meech, the old pictures, the old school pictures. Everything. I look in his eyes and I see that stone cold feeling of a nigga who, who's hustling hard, but is at the top of the top level. And everybody, you got a billboard. Everybody knows. Yeah, something. yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was that nigga. He really was him. But to be in that position and deal with the shit, you know when they watching, you feel like he made his mind up to possibly cooperate long before he went in. I don't know. I don't know that. And I'm not saying he cooperated. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's, <laughs> what, that's what them niggas, that's what all them fed niggas is saying. Right. Okay. Okay. And then them niggas ran down a long list of niggas right here in the city to me. Niggas broke my heart with a lot of names. But let me tell you something about the feds. Because cause I told, I, I, when I was talking to them, I made, I made it a point to, you know, even though we seen the outcome of them going to jail, I still made it a point to say to my, my niggas, like, Big Meech didn't get caught with no money. No dope. No dope. Somebody, never got had, somebody definitely had to tell. Never got caught on the phone. It had Somebody had to he tell. He just had a life. Now he, didn't, he told on himself because the lifestyle was too extravagant and you ain't got a paper trail of, the, of this money. You told on yourself. That's telling on yourself. That's self snitch. That's he might as well do a song featuring one of these little young niggas today. <laughs> Cause you 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 putting it out there. Yeah, the the billboard. Right, right, right. What is you nigga? Who is this nigga? What is this nigga? I didn't know the nigga till I seen him on the Smack DVD when they had them or that famous one when they had the umbrella in the dough. He was he was free at that time. Yeah, him yeah, yeah, blew yeah. the venue. When I seen it, I said he was going to the penitentiary. I, and that was my first time. I, I had probably been home maybe not even a year yet and seen this man. I was like, who is this nigga? I say, this nigga going to the penitentiary. Nigga, you can't account for this shit. What the fuck is you doing on this DVD? He possibly knew. So let me tell you what. This is some shit that blew my mind. I'm going to tell you two goddamn things. Now, we all know he didn't get caught with nothing. But my nigga told me that the feds was on me them for like five years. Makes sense. My nigga told me that let's say the feds on you and they know you scoring 250 bricks a month. That's 300 bricks a year. Wait, 250 bricks a I'm, month? I mean, that's 3,000 bricks. That's 3,000 yeah. bricks, my bad. That's okay. 3,000 bricks a oh, year. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's say the feds run down on you like they did Meech. They don't catch you with nothing, but they know you scored 3,000 bricks a year and they investigated you five years. When they come down on you, 
Nigga, they charge you for every brick they feel like you ever scold. Within them five years? Within them five years. Yeah. And then he say they take all of your money. All the money they seize, they turn that to dope. They equate that to dope and they add that to your sentence. These people here, is the, these devils don't play. Let, let's never forget this one fact about the U.S. government. The U.S. government, a lot of people don't even know where tax evasion come from. Okay. The U.S. government created tax evasion to lock Al Capone up. They, didn't, they couldn't beat, they couldn't get him. They created a law. And say, fuck it, nigga, you ain't giving us no money, nigga. You ain't paying us shakedown. You going to jail. Yeah. They created a law on the spot to lock a nigga up. This is the government that this is a wicked system. And when you on top and you ain't got an answer to nobody, corruption comes easy. And our government is, every government is corrupt. They like to say that they work for the people. No, they don't. Every government is self-serving and power hungry. And they are just looking to stay in power. And that's because if you, what, which one of the, these politicians, that's why they politics so hard and campaign so hard. And that's why they hit people so hard in the feds. That's why the feds hit the way they do. Yeah. Man, these people don't want to lose power, man. This is a wicked system, man. These people play different. They play way different, man. And the average motherfucker ain't ready. See, the thing, especially when it comes to us, the majority of us still live 400 years in the past. So many niggas still talking about reparations. Man, these white folks is 100, 200 years ahead. Did you see the robots this nigga Elon Musk just unveiled. Yep. Niggas is still talking about reparations 400 years ago. This bitch ass nigga just had a fleet of robots walking down the street. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy as fuck, man. Shit is wild, man. And man, these people, man, niggas, niggas so far behind, man. I sometimes, well, I know we, we ain't gonna never, we ain't gonna catch up Ever. economically. Uh, socially, it's only one way we could catch up. It's only one way. Was that war? Burn this bitch to the <laughs> ground. That's it. That's the only way. Man. That's the real. only way. What? You, can't nobody give a feasible solution for every black person, every, uh, cause we are behind enemy lines and I don't give a damn what black person you think you are or what status you didn't think you didn't go on it or what ladder you didn't think you didn't climb. Even if you're Big Meech. Even if you're Big Meech. Even if you're Beyonce or Jay-Z, nigga. They, if, they, if you did it, nigga, they'll tap on your shoulder, nigga. It don't matter who you is, my nigga. You are still being oppressed. I don't give a damn. Jay-Z a billionaire. He's still, oppression is still on his heels. Whenever they choose to play that card, man. Because it's always somebody, it's always going to be somebody bigger than a nigga. But, but what Jay-Z said, white nigga, rich, rich nigga, nigga, black nigga. Uh, but he was just nigga. saying that because he wanted a nigga still, to buy his album. Man. Still a nigga. Yeah. Man, it, Man, shout out to Jay Z. Man, he said it. He said, he said it, but that, that's <laughs> he ain't mean it. Word, I feel, I feel you. All right, so check this out. Even if you're Big Meech and you selling three, you 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 scoring three thousand kilos a year, and you basically told on yourself, you was convicted, your whole organization went down. The way you depicted that so vividly, it should be impossible for you to get out in 16 years, basically. You was the biggest black dope dealer ever. My nigga said- During the hip hop era. Yeah. You Shit, was putting I, rappers on. Yeah, but I'm, I don't, if, if, if you wasn't the biggest dope wise, you damn sure was the biggest nationwide because no nigga has never put together a nationwide organization. From Detroit to Atlanta. Yeah. That's a long shit. Distance. All the way to LA, to New York, to Houston. Okay, so yeah, facts. So what's the minimum? He did 16 years 
with five years supervision. So that's 24 years on a 30 year sentence. And the minimum you're supposed to do is 85% in the feds. I did my research yeah. before this interview. Yeah. So 85% of 30 years is like 20, 20, almost 27 years. Yeah, 20, almost 27 years. Right. So even with five years supervision. And then, and then he still get out and the discretion and the supervision is at the discretion of them. So he, he could do anywhere from that the remaining of that sentence to they tax some on. Because right, they, right, right. they could actually make you do all uh, because my nigga had signed for a five, and then they gave him five years supervision after he pulled the five, the eighty-five percent of the five, That's and crazy. then he had to still come home to five. But they let him off in three. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? So it's at their discretion. That's like a lot of motherfuckers was talking about Obama let him off a uh, truck. Nigga, get the fuck up out of here, nigga. That shit worked by a point system, my nigga. And then it's still at the discretion of your drug. It was only knocking off two points from your system. Two points is like two years. And so, then your judge still, it, it's the judge that says if you get it or not. Because my nigga said his partner wrote the judge and brought him a letter in his cell. The nigga had pulled, already pulled 24 years in the feds. He'd already been down 24 years. I think on a 45. I think that's what he said. He was 24 on a 45. So he brought the letter to his cell and and spread it and said the judge told him, I don't think you've done enough time. That's crazy. Yeah, I interviewed Cartel Bo. He had a, a partner that uh, got a, it's for a the bank robbery. Bank, bank robbery. robbery. Yeah, I seen. And that the clip. nigga got got a crazy sentence. Yeah, and he wouldn't even get that got that much money. But he got like he got a, a state case. He did his like twenty years for the state case, and they didn't run his twenty. He did. Uh, he did more time because the guns were used were stolen, so it went fed or some shit like that. But the nigga was like eighteen when he did the bank robbery, and the nigga's like fifty now yeah. with another like thirty to go. Yeah, because they, they never ran his his fed in, his, in yeah. the state concurrent. Yeah, the ad C. Yeah, shit, wild. Yeah, it's the wild. feds don't play. No, but at the same time, I never time, heard no nigga getting out of feds early. At the same time, it's dirty, my nigga, because you. White boys cunning motherfuckers out of billions of dollars. Get a slap on the wrist. Three years, four years. Because when they con and shit, they more than likely partying with all these motherfuckers who getting down anyway. So yeah, that shit, this whole this whole system is is crooked. All this shit is set up for uh niggas to ruin black and brown lives. People, Absolutely. that's that's what it's set up to that's do. That's American system. Rinse and repeat. I want to ask you this, though. So from everything we talked about from each, what, from a good estimate from the people that you talked to and your knowledge, what would be a reasonable amount of time to not, not question his cooperation if he would have got out? He got a 30-year sentence. Should he have done, like, the whole 27 and with supervision, then it would have seemed like how much time would it be the minimum to be at least reasonable? Man, my partner said there's only three ways you get out the Fed. You do your time, a compassionate release, like you got terminal four cancer, you finna die tomorrow. Yeah. Or you tell. Anything besides that there is is it is what it is, fam. Cause it ain't no Ain't, I just told the feds don't make exceptions. Talking about uh, they let big uh, Southwest T out behind COVID. He the only nigga they let out behind. He the only nigga they got out for COVID. Right. The only nigga they let out for COVID. Yeah. Because of COVID. Larry Hoover been down since the seventies. It's crazy. That Larry Hoover shit is a whole nother man. Panthers been here. They gonna hold the Panthers. See. Yeah. And but they let that's and that's another thing that I was looking at. Uh, I knew it had to be something because black men that have great leadership skills, they don't release them. Real shit. It's about the influence. Yeah. It's like Meech. I feel like Meech's influence it was a part of what. Yeah. But if they could paint his story. As a as something that will lead black men down the path wrong, like we can't let you know the Black Panther story, we can't yeah. let you know the Larry yeah. Hoover story, but we could we could twist the Meech story up with yeah. you, and, and we'll work with you 
because your story isn't militant. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. how I look at it. Yeah, but black men with great leadership skills are not wanted in this country. They not, that's, that's you know, <laughs> they not. They're not trying to see you thrive and be celebrated. That's that's just not what they do because a, a black man with with leadership skills and and organizational skills and with influence is a dangerous man. You know yes. what I'm saying? They, they, they're a dangerous man. They'll kill him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. Um, I want to ask you this, though, because earlier you spoke about like when you were talking to a lot of the people about how the snitch culture works, the fair culture works, and then also honing in on a post that you made a couple of days where you made a bold statement about some information you found out, not just about snitch culture, but about Houston, Texas snitch culture. Can you get into that? It's terrible, man. So you- All these, all these cats out here, man. Every, if it's a good chance that if if they been to the feds and they rolling, they out of that. They so, out of that, fam. You made you made a statement and you said that you feel like it's a bunt, man. It's, it's a Houston, terrible. Texas, man. Gas, my, this is what this is what this is what, this is what my my OG tell me. He told me he said he was on a on a farm with three thousand motherfuckers. And out of the 3,000, only 75 or 80 of them were stiff. Everybody else had folded. Damn. That's, that's a, out of 3,000, 75, 80, that's like. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe that, man. I asked him, I said, how did you stay? I wouldn't have been, a, my spirit wouldn't have been right around and, and that environment. Stiff, and not stiff me, flip-flop in any kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. Me black and not, man. Why? I, I wouldn't have been able to deal with the energy, man, because I y'all got me up. That's like being around a penitentiary full of pedophile. Yeah, real shit. Real shit. A rapist. Yeah, man. That's crazy, man. Yeah, but you know, but Houston is out of there, man. He's and these cats ain't ain't fucked up about it, man. These these niggas is is telling, man. They they can't stand on, you know. It's sickening, man. Because if you go be a man about everything you do, be a man about it all the way out. Because when you out here in these streets and 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 you doing what you're doing, you getting the money, you fucking bitches, you balling, and you being the man. Be the man all the way out. You the boss. Boss, uh, be the boss, man. Boss up on that time. Boss up on your issues. Stand on that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? I, ain't, I, ain't, I, I. Let me just shout out to niggas who take they lick. Cause niggas always, nigga, I'ma take my lick, nigga. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a take mine, nigga. I ain't, oh, the laws jump out. Bitch ass nigga don't say nothing. Not everybody go to jail for your shit. Right. You are the honorary police, bitch ass nigga. And shout out to niggas that take another nigga lick and stay stiff. You a whole different type of real nigga, my nigga. Real shit. You take another nigga lick and stay stiff, you a whole different type of another real nigga, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And it, you know, and it is what it is. And, and motherfuckers want to, you got a bunch of, uh, Motherfuckers outside always is black niggas outside, but uh, them niggas so dope or whoop de whoop de whoop. Nigga, take that bitch ass shit up with the United States government, whole ass nigga. Niggas don't never point out who create the conditions or who flood the motherfucker. All this shit go hand in hand. These niggas ain't ain't these niggas is just responding to a situation where they was placed in. A nigga didn't ask. You think a nigga would prefer to? Put every his entire life on the line, all this shit here on the line versus not having to, but still being able to survive healthily. Healthily, bitch ass nigga, that shit don't make no sense. But a nigga won't take, well, I, man, get the fuck out of here, man. Everybody is not built the same. Everybody uh, don't 
can't withstand the same pressure. Everybody don't think the same. Everybody is not given the same ambition. Everybody is not given the same knowledge. Everybody is not given the same skill set. Everybody is different, man. I got a partner born into a house full of the, every adult in the house was a dope fiend. No light, shit in the bucket type shit. Crazy. So how the fuck am I going to blame this nigga for what the fuck he became? But a Negro pen don't give a fuck about that. Nigga, they gonna rock with what the white man say. The white man don't give a fuck about none of that. They only give a fuck about it when little Timmy is fucked up about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, drop your definition to what? Because you always quote that line, Negro pen. What is a Negro pen? Basically, uh, all of us are Negro pens to a certain degree, some more than others. But just a uh, black man with white skin, every nigga see everything through the lens of the white man. We we think like the white man, we speak like the white man, we see like the white man. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna drop a, a little like a, a little test for you to see. I'm gonna throw two names out there, and you tell me who is more Negro. Pen. Who is who's the biggest Negro pen? <laughs> who's, I like that. Who's biggest Negro Negro pen? I like that. I'm gonna start with Dave Chappelle or Cat Williams. Dave Chappelle. Okay. Um, Wayne Brady or Ray J? Wayne Brady. Okay. Ray J is a nigga. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wayne Brady can play a nigga real well, but Ray J is a nigga. And Wayne, he didn't have to, hold up, man. Ray J didn't have to be a nigga. He just wanted to be gangster so goddamn bad. But real nigga, shit. were you brandy little brother at the end of the day, nigga? Real shit. Yeah. So, okay, so Wayne. With both your parents. Good household. Good house. Wayne Brady or Dave Chappelle? Monique, that, Wayne Brady. Okay. Wayne Brady or Barack Obama? Barack Obama. Okay. Barack Obama or. Charleston White? Barack Obama. Okay. Barack Obama or. Fictional character, character Uncle Ruck, Ruckus. Barack Obama. Okay. Barack Obama or Al Sharpton? Barack Obama. Okay. Barack Obama or Jesse Jackson? Barack Obama. Barack Obama. You ain't going to find a bigger Negro pen than Barack <laughs> Obama. He's the biggest Negro pen. In this country, of all time, he's the biggest Negro pen in this in the in this country because one, he's really not Negro. Of, yeah, Negro. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you mean Negro, you mean niggas from slaves? Yeah, Negro okay. pen. Yeah, but he, but you know, he think he's a nigga spokesman. You know what I'm saying? He's who the. He's the white folks too. Every nigga up there is is the white folks too, and they marched him out there like, you know, he don't worry about it, massa. Why I know how to talk to these niggas. I got these niggas for you. No, you don't, bitch ass nigga. You didn't got way too comfortable with a nigga. Barack Obama recently had a Bill Cosby moment, not in a negative way, but in a sense of trying to yeah, tell a check nigga. black yeah, America. nigga, you uh -huh. ain't you didn't got too comfortable, bitch ass nigga. Who, who he was checking somebody about the way they spoke about it, Kamala? If, uh, nah, uh, he was talking. See, they said he said that uh, black men don't want need to get out, get their head out their ass, vote for you. Don't want to be led by a woman. First off, niggas don't like that bitch. <laughs> Fuck that funky bitch. And I ain't gonna apologize, Lord Jamal. You should have stayed on your, stood on your square. Fuck that funky bitch. I say it again. Let it ride. Fuck that funky bitch. Oh uh, yeah, cause when motherfuckers was calling for Michelle to be president, niggas would have rallied behind Michelle. Man, this bitch locked niggas up. This that's what this bitch chose to do. Lock niggas up. And then I understand it's your job, but then the bitch was dirty about it. The bitch was issuing out more time to niggas than she was issuing out to anybody else. Same case, same goddamn uh issues going on. Only difference, one black, one white. 
nigga get more time. She tried to suppress evidence of a man that they knew was innocent and keep the nigga in the penitentiary. In San Francisco? Was it in San Francisco? I don't Talking know. about Kamala? Yeah. Yeah, she's from San Francisco. I don't know where, where they, the fuck they, it happened. They claim that case is from San Francisco. I don't know where it was from. Yeah. I just know what the fuck she did. Okay. I don't give a fuck where. If it could have been on the other side of the moon, that's what the funky bitch did. The white folks know that she don't have a problem fucking over niggas because she's not a nigga. For sure. But she she might, if you would have said that hoe, I probably would have had to choose her over Barack Obama. Kamala over Barack? Because she locked yeah. niggas up. <laughs> so sometimes she, you gotta she lock running up. for she running for that same position to do what he did, but he locked niggas up. And you bitches is calling for this hoe to be your leader and your savior, fucking bitch. And she just go get up there, do that shit, and try to do y'all in four to eight years like Barack just done us. You stupid fucking bitches. And niggas trying to say that's what's wrong with black bitches. A nigga can't say you bitches steady claim to be saved, but with a nigga trying to save you from your motherfucking self, you fight a nigga, funky bitch. Yeah. Okay, so how, in your words, how would you describe how Barack did us? He really he ain't do shit. He done exactly what he was he was meant to do, man. He was he he was meant to give niggas false hope and he was all uh, meant to give this 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 narrative, this false narrative, falsehood that America is post racist and look, we had a black president and now we uh, try to have a black bitch president so you know but niggas is still getting the shit killed out of them and all this shit here you know what i'm saying and it, it ain't gonna stop there's so, only one way to stop it and niggas niggas ain't niggas niggas can't i ain't gonna say can't but niggas can't because they like i say we 400 years behind these people man these people got robots they'll shoot the shit out of you with now nah, my nigga so from you, you kind of feel like, this is how I'm looking at it. Barack was just a pacifier for black people as we approach more trivial and trying times. Yeah, and, and they, you know, they could try it's to use... It's not a bad assessment either. No, it's not. It's not at all. And, and, and anytime they have problems with niggas, you know, he's the, the, the end all be all. Like he's supposed to be the, the black American father figure. And I guess they try to make this funky bitch, Kamala Harris, the black mother, the black mother symbol of, of, of black motherhood, the symbol of black. So now from this point on till they die, niggas got to what will Barack and what will Kamala do? And these bitch ass niggas ain't even like us. They not like us. They not like us. But these are the motherfuckers that we going to answer to and they're going to decide what happens with us when they don't have the same pain, the same struggle, the same shit in their DNA that we got. That's why they don't give a fuck about us because we carry something within our DNA that makes us feel a certain type of way that they don't carry in their DNA. They can't sympathize and empathize with that feeling because it's not within their core. This shit is a part of your soul, a part of your spirit, bitch ass nigga. And they ain't got it in their spirit. They ain't got the spirit of a fucking warrior, a runaway slave, bitch ass nigga. You some whole ass niggas. Hate you whole ass niggas. Good shit, man. I feel that, I feel that. If Kamala becomes the president, she would of course become the first female, female president and the second non-Caucasian president. Yeah. Do you feel like Kamala becoming president of the United States would change a lot of shit for women in America. Hell no, man. What did Barack change for niggas? These stupid bitches is looking for a savior. The savior is 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 the nigga is the you joining with the same nigga that you bitches is steady ranting and raving about talking about how much money a nigga got to have and what a nigga got to have. That's where your fucking saving come from. You you and us us and them getting together. But they just, it's just been a, a wider divide, and I, and I play a part in it. I'm not one thing you can understand about me. I'm a real self-aware nigga, and I ain't I, a kind got a, pro, a problem with accountability. And I know when I fuck up, or when I do something, or when I'm a part of something. I know when I didn't motherfucking 
sold some dope and I didn't got jammed up and say, give me my time, send me to my cell, ain't a bitch ass thing to talk about past that. I know I'm a self-aware nigga, I'm a prideful nigga. And you know, but that's why the savior, the saving uh comes down to us unifying, but you know, they just creating a water divide and they using they using this bitch as a tool to create a, a divide between black men and black women. And this motherfucker where you you go off for Trump. No, nigga, this I don't the, this is the, if you want to create a divide, this is the time. Yeah. A, a nigga, I don't give a fuck. Up. I ain't going for damn one of the shit. I go for anarchy, bitch ass nigga. That's what I vote for. Let me tell you, why don't niggas do this here? Why don't we, as a people, if if we gonna be a part of this system? Because I don't. We really ain't. I I tell y'all over and over again. The only reason this system is like this is to keep motherfuckers from rebelling, from the peep for the to keep people from feeling like they shoving somebody down your throat. They don't put in office whoever the fuck they want in office. You don't count the votes, bitch ass nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All you can go on is what they tell you. If they tell you a motherfucking spaceship landed in the middle of the desert right now, get on TV and show you an alien and get all these special motherfuckers that do effects and get all these motherfuckers that in suits that that, that look trustworthy and tell you what well, that's what the fuck niggas gonna go with. That's all they ever motherfucking went with. I feel you, I hear you. The programming. I hear you, I hear you. Do you think at any point if Kamala became president, wouldn't it empower women? Man, these bitches. Bitches look at being argumentative and hard-headed as being empowered. <laughs> you think so? Do I think so? <laughs> Fuck. I'm asking questions. That's, nigga, that's one of the dumbest motherfucking questions you ever asked me then, nigga. And we done done a bunch of motherfucking interviews, but that shit, that was F B F I dumpster juice, nigga. Do I think so? Damn, I'm just trying to see, like, you nah, feel real like that. Fuck, nigga, have I, when have I, me and you been doing this shit, how long? We been doing this a few years. Like, and have I ever said any motherfucking thing that I, I, it's halfway sounded like I didn't believe or didn't come from my motherfucking heart? No, nah, but I'm saying I'm saying the thought of it, like, okay, Kamala become president. Man, now that shit down, you know, motherfuckers might uh, self empowerment, like uh, I can be anything type shit. Right, you know? that's what I mean. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, that's anything because I don't. I've never heard mm, anything for her like policy wise. I'm gonna do this for women. She but I'm saying from yeah, her, yeah, yeah, from a from a from a mental standpoint, giving a little a little five year old black girl who don't know any better. You know what I'm saying? To be look on TV, that's the president. Yeah, I can I can dig that to show this little five year old black girl give you know give us some hope. Now, how real is that hope that she's been given? Because when she hit eighteen or twenty five and find out what the world really is, you know what I'm saying? The same little five year old black girl that looked at at Kamala with 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 stars in her eyes and with so much hope and with so much. Uh, adoration and and so many dreams and then you see her at 23 she a peer head stripper that's selling pussy out of a motherfucking juke joint hole in the wall type strip club damn that's crazy you know what I mean <laughs> now I feel you though I feel you all right so but looking at it like this though looking at it like this um Kamala becomes a president a woman becomes a president you know, uh, I don't give a fuck. Let me get this. Like, I don't give a fuck who president is because every day I wake up, I still got to pay my bills and I'm black in a motherfucking country that really hate my black ass. But I'm going to say what these other niggas ain't going to say. Fuck now. A nigga really don't want to be led by no bitch. A bitch can't lead no real man. OK, OK. I feel that. I feel that. So it was only like five, six years ago. T.I. in an interview, I'll post the clip right here. In the interview, he said, you know, a woman shouldn't be president. They're too emotional, this, that, and the third. But it's almost like when we're looking at her, the other option, it's like, damn, it might, you it know. It don't matter. Let, it man, might really be. Them people is just puppets and figureheads, man. They ain't, they just, I really, in, in, in the heart of my hearts, I really feel like that they going to put 
and office because they they created a blue mit, a blueprint and they found out a format that works. I think the real powers that be, man, that president ain't shit, man. You know what I'm saying? They just that's some shit to keep us entertained. That's like uh when the people are restless, throw a gladiator in the arena to fight a lion and give them some some entertainment. Yeah. And that's what the president is. The powers that be that really decide what the fuck is going on with the, with this country, they probably just trying to figure out who could they put in position that they could get more shit, do more shit with. They know Donald Trump is a disturbance, so motherfucker gonna be so focused on Donald Trump, they ain't gonna be paying attention that we raping the planet over here or that we really that oppress the whole fucking country of people in, in Africa. We got five-year-old motherfucking babies mining for lithium and all this shit here to, to you know, they just want to keep a nigga, it's, it, keep a motherfucker looking over here. It's like a magician, my nigga. All this shit is a magic trick. Keeping niggas looking, and looking over here, but a nigga ain't never looking over here, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Keep you looking down, because if you ever look up, you just might see who really the fuck standing on your neck, nigga. Damn, that's crazy. Hell uh, yeah. With, let's say, Kamala becomes the president. You love pushing this funky bitch narrative about this, if this I'm bitch becomes president. The, I know you're not pushing it, I'm, but fuck that funky I, I bitch. Want, Cause I want to like, you ever, you ever had? Yeah, you, you want to just see how many times you can get me to say fuck that funky bitch? No, no, oh, no. no. Right. You're, you're, okay, let me ask you a question. What do you like to put on your sandwich, as far as a spread? What you mean? So you like meat, cheese, lettuce, tomato, but mayonnaise, mustard. No, nah, I don't fuck with no mayonnaise. Mustard? Yeah. You like mustard on your sandwich. Yeah. All right. So you ever put the mustard on your sandwich, on your bread, and it was just like too thick in one spot, but you got to spread it out? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to spread it out, man. All right. Okay. Just trying to spread it out, man. All right. <laughs> so but what the question I'm going to ask you now is this. A woman becomes the president. Is it ever a point in the modern society that men need to come to a realization that a woman can do anything a man can do. Nah, a bitch can't do or, everything. No or not, e not only that, or is it e finally at a point nah, fuck, that, nah, that equality is, within the gender? Nah, they, nah they, that's some shit that I didn't even think. That's a good ass question. Now, nah, that's some shit that they might be trying to uh, sell these bitches ideally and symbolically. I mean, I would think that would be a great. I'm saying, but, I, but 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 they they yeah, it's a great fucking question. But it's only symbolism. They just doing a symbol. Okay, bitch, now shut up about that equality shit, fucking bitch. That's a good great fucking question. I never thought about that. I never thought about it from that angle. I must say that was a bad motherfucker. <laughs> I never thought that they could be giving these these hoes that hoe so they could shut you fucking bitches up about screaming all this equality shit, and they still gonna be. Tan you fucking bitches up and telling y'all what y'all can do and what you can't do. But bitch, you you had equality. Like niggas, that like niggas need to shut the fuck up about black a black president. Y'all got one. Y'all had like, one. This this would be feminism coming to a head. Yeah, yeah. All you feminist bitches. Damn, I, I might be rooting for this bitch here because if this hoe become president, we might get less ugly frumpy ass dyke hoes. <laughs> All you ugly stud, but we might get less stud, ugly stud, bitch. Man, I don't know about that. It, 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 Cause like you say, feminism come to the head once you pop that bubble. Pop, there ain't no no more need for that old ass shit. It's nothing but falling action after that. <laughs> <laughs> we had all the rising action, hit the climax. Now it's nothing but yeah, yeah, baby, that baby, that is that's that's a. I, but I never thought about that. That was a great fucking. That was a great fucking point and a great uh, way to view that shit. That was a great perspective. Appreciate that. Yeah. Man. Appreciate that. It wouldn't be an interview in 2024 if I didn't talk about this particular topic, which is probably almost a burnt out fucking topic. But we got to talk about the diddler. <laughs> the hottest topic. Nigga got a whole new nickname. The diddler. But the only the aspect that I we kind of know what's going on with it, everything. It's like when you look at it, it's like some shit we knew over the years. But like. Do you think, okay, here's the question I want to ask, because I got a few questions. You think he will ever get out of jail? Good question. Uh, 
I don't know. I ain't even really been keeping up with what what's the status of whatever he got going. I know he's in jail, but I'm saying There's I some new shit every day and it I, get worse yeah. and worse. I, I heard he just got another case or some shit. Is he that got 120 civil cases. But I'm saying he just somebody just another case. I think I seen on Yeah, somebody accused him of rape. And it was a 13-year-old girl. You know what I'm saying? He got a lot of shit. This shit crazy. Bro. A 13-year-old girl? Yeah, she's probably like grown now. But, oh. But she accused him of rape. When she was 13. You know what I mean? But it's a lot. It's, he's got 120 new civil cases. Um, like more criminal charges. And then the, this, the, the craziest thing that turned out, I feel to me, the craziest thing that turned out after all of this shit is that the thousand bottles of baby oil yeah, the turned GFB. out not to be baby oil, but it's actually a, day yeah. rape drug. Yeah. So that makes, if it's true, that makes him a drug smuggler. That makes him like a lot of shit. And really, that's a real drug. At this point, man, I really don't know where I stand on this shit. I don't know what's sometimes in this country and in this society, it's hard to tell what's real and what's fake, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Especially with all this social media. It's hard to tell what's real and what's fake. And it's hard to put anything past anybody. It's hard for me to put it past Diddy that he done the shit that they said, and it's hard for me to put it past the uh, the government running up in there and planting that shit. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. It, it's hard for me to put it past that it, it was really his, and it's hard for me to put it past that the government planted it. You know what I'm saying? Because in this day and age, anything is fucking possible. And, like... Reality is way stranger than fiction like a motherfucker right now. Facts. Facts. It's, it's a bunch of shit going on. And do I think he did some shit? Yeah. How much shit? I don't know. But do I think that that's what it's really all about? No, my nigga. That's just what they going to feed the sheep, feed the, feed the public. Because that's what they know. Niggas is chomping at the bit and salivating behind but they ain't going to reveal what this shit is really behind. Damn. Yeah, and Diddy is, nigga, I, well, I guess he, no snitching, fuck it, stick to the code, Diddy, don't, don't fuck it, nigga. No, Diddy going to tell it, but there's nobody to tell on, that's the only thing. But Diddy, he just got information, he ain't got, I don't think, he might got information to send niggas to jail, I don't know, I think he got information to ruin lives. But I think the leaking of the information is what got him in trouble. The fact that you got all this shit on all these people and all this activity going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know, man. I, it's, it's crazy. I don't really know what to expect. You know, I really don't. Did you? I, I know one thing I do know that it seemed like it is making it way harder to walk away from his shit than, than Big Meat shit was, or Donald Trump shit was, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy how Donald shit, Trump shit under the rug. Huh, this nigga running for president like a motherfucker. That's crazy. Did you see, there's a clip that went viral, I'm trying to find it, of P. Diddy, like, doing an interview with Charlemagne and talking some real heavyweight political shit as far as incorporating uh, a political like structure and just exclusively to black people. That's, that's what that's damn. Are you double back because we was talking and that's why I was one of the things I was about to tell you when about niggas if niggas really trying to be inclusive into this system. That's crazy because I went off, you know, a nigga just be ranting sometime and went off. Yeah, and I, I was originally trying to make that point a little bit earlier that why niggas just don't get an exclusive party for us and we find somebody that represents us, us and long and I know it's going to be hard to get that nigga uh, in that powerful leadership role because you're going to need more than just our support but but I, I think if niggas created their own party and we, we chose our own lead who we wanted to represent us and I think it'll be other races that, that that joined in because if not for anything, niggas gonna make it look so cool and niggas gonna make it look like the it thing and niggas gonna have the best parties, the best music, the best drugs, I guess, especially if Diddy had that <laughs> motherfucker, you know. So it'll be some motherfuckers that come across and vote 
for you know, especially if a nigga find the right motherfucker, a charismatic, good looking motherfucker who, you know, who knows how to resonate and that, that seem like they're a decent motherfucker. You might need an indecent motherfucker. Well, we got Trump shit, so. So here's this clip. I was looking for it the whole time he was talking. This is the clip of Diddy. And they say this might that be why. Thinking, it's real dangerous. Um, this man literally um, threatened the lives of us and our families about going to vote. Mm -hmm. Stand back and stand by. Stand back and stand by. Yeah. We're in a war. We're not taking this like it's a war. We're taking this like, oh, we're in a presidential election. Mm -hmm. No, we in a war of love versus hate. The tribe of people that have the responsibility and really should be scared to death of this man is white people. Mm, explain. If this man is elected, we're not standing by no more getting killed. We're not scared of anybody. Stop it right now. I don't, I don't, I don't want to yeah. hear that shit, nigga. I don't fuck that shit. When them niggas, see them, them hoe ass niggas is tools for the white man. Negro pen. Hold on, say it again. Them niggas is tools for the white man. Negro pen. That old, this man get elected, somebody get, get killed. Nigga, more niggas got killed during Barack. Oh, damn, they a nigga a week. A nigga a week. More motherfuckers got killed under Barack's watch. More innocent black motherfuckers got killed under his watch. Way more than Trump. And this ain't no advocacy for Trump. It's just fucking facts. And Barack Obama didn't say a bitch ass thing. Didn't go to one funeral. Remember when that law man got killed under his watch? He got up and spoke. So I don't let do if, if Donald Trump, man, that fuck that, fuck that bitch, fuck Donald Trump, fuck these bitch ass niggas for trying to persuade a nigga with this whole ass shit. You niggas is just in bed with these, but it's beneficial to you. So you telling niggas some bitch ass shit. Man, fuck them. If you was really a real motherfucker, you would tell them, man, fuck all this whole ass shit. Nigga, it's time for us to insulate us. It's time for us to take care of us. Where is these bitch ass niggas saying that? You bitch ass niggas ain't got the spirit of Fred Hampton and, and Bobby Seals and Huey P. You some bitch ass niggas. You some whole ass niggas. That's what the fuck you is. You's a bitch ass nigga. You steady telling a motherfucker to run to the motherfuckers that's creating our problems and these people is the people that's going to solve your problems. Nigga, that ain't what this system is about, bitch ass nigga. You can stop then you whole ass niggas instead of buying into that drinking that whole ass Kool-Aid. Man, if these people wanted to really solve niggas' problem, they could wake up tomorrow and everything be be done, man, and everything be fair and everything be equal and everything be better. We wouldn't be having this fucking conversation. You don't think these people had a power? Man, these people talk about war on drugs. Y'all let the drugs in. Y'all in bed with the dope men. With the big cartels. All this shit is a game, nigga. They, when they had a ban on Cuba, you couldn't sneak one Cuban cigar into the country. But yet you could bring a key, a, a, a 18 wheeler full of kilos across the border? You, do you bitch ass niggas even think? Do you niggas even fucking think? Man, you niggas is crazy, man. You niggas just sit up and listen to any old bitch ass thing, man. That's bullshit with did fuck what did he talking about about was is this the reason he was really man fuck no man them people I just sat there and told them people gonna do what the fuck like everybody all these niggas project 2025 man these people will enact whatever policy and law they want what have you ever done to stop these people from enacting a policy and law bitch ass nigga what president ever stopped them from fucking over niggas you've been fucked over by every president that sat nigga you can't tell me the difference of the quality of your motherfucking life from president to president. How did your life get better or worse from the next president to the next president? Nigga, Acres home is Acres home. I'm a full, full baby. That shit is the same shit as been since I've been born, bitch ass nigga. Well, you niggas need to. Which one do you want, my nigga? Do you want us to do it? Or do you want the government to do it? Because when I say shit like that, oh, well, y'all niggas in y'all hood, who is responsible? You bitch ass niggas want to pick and choose to try to win a fucking argument instead of being real about what the fuck it is.
Fuck out of here, man. That's why I hate you niggas, man. I hate you niggas, man. I really tough time, man. I, this whole ass interview got my blood pressure up like a motherfucker, <laughs> man. Man, I'm sorry about that, man. Have you have you noticed though a trend of like black celebrities endorsing Donald Trump though? I ain't, I ain't, I don't give a fuck, my nigga. I, if I see something cross my timeline, uh, and it's some, like Donald Trump talking about, uh, he gonna get rid of, cause there's so much shit go on, my nigga. I got so much shit in my phone. I'm addressing uh, what you don't know. I'm addressing a lot of shit. And I'm hitting talking points that I got saved, uh, shit in my phone that I can't, it's so much shit that I can't even make posts on. Cause there's so much shit going on in this fucking world. And I see something, I'll be like, oh, that, that'd be good talk. But it's so much shit going on. And I got shit going on in my life. Uh, but yeah, Donald Trump talking about uh, erasing slavery from being taught. Bitch ass nigga, use a whole, a whole ass. A politician would tell you anything you want to hear. He sit right in front of niggas and say, I'm friend of niggas. Then go right there on Fox. I'm erasing these niggas up out the history book. You, do you niggas see what the fuck I'm saying? I'm not saying Kamala Harris is the entire system. The entire system is not for you. These people will say and do whatever the fuck they feel like they need to, and they will say and do whatever the fuck they feel like they want to. And ain't a bitch ass thing you gonna do to stop it. It don't matter who the president is. Whatever they want to do, my nigga, they gonna do. They okay, fuck it. It's not Project 2025. Not call it uh nigga stand on business. The nigga stand on business law. Oh, niggas gonna put uh, and the nigga they'll pass a bill on tax on 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 gas tax and all the fine print will be Project 2025. You dumbass niggas, man. You niggas, you niggas, you niggas, you niggas ain't on my level, my nigga. I, and I'ma just say it, man. You, you bitch ass niggas is not on my level. You whole ass niggas is not ready for me, my nigga. Y'all leave me the fuck alone, my nigga. Like real shit, cause you nigga, you niggas go do what the fuck you do. I'ma stay over here and mind my motherfucking business. I'm, I'ma give me a, some popcorn or some snacks, <laughs> nigga, and just watch, my nigga. Cause you bitch ass niggas is, you know, y'all never fair. Every time I think niggas can't get no more niggerish or mo, no more. You niggas always, you always surprise a nigga, man, y'all. Okay, so, but what do you think, like, is the most, what do you think is the most significant reason why promoting Donald Trump is a, is a trend for, like, black I celebrities? I don't know, man. Who the fuck knows? I don't know what. Okay, for, you seen Antonio Brown endorsing. He went out and gave a speech about uh, Donald Trump. You didn't see that? Nice. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, niggas just, niggas want to be up under the white man and niggas want to feel like they're a part of something, man. Niggas want to feel like we overcame. Yeah. Nigga want to, Martin, we live in a dream, nigga. <laughs> we live, well, we live in a dream, nigga. This was your dream, wasn't it, cake ass nigga? <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, but right. recently, I think today, the former CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch, uh, was indicted on sex oh. trafficking charges. Damn it, man. Uh, nah, I just seen. Similar to some Diddy shit. Yeah. Uh, I, you know how you got the, the drop down on your phone? Or uh, uh, like a new, because I follow a news page. I really hardly ever look at that shit, too. I, I followed it for one article and just never canceled, stopped the subscription. And uh, and I seen that drop down on my phone. It just I just seen Abercrombie and FIT. And I just knew it was Abercrombie and Fitch. I just didn't tap to drop it all the way down to see what the headline was. So you informing me of some shit right now. But I, I did see that uh, on, on my phone that something happened with Abercrombie and Fitch. I just didn't know what it was. And it's, it's hella like similar to like the Diddy shit. It's so crazy because, you know, and it's like he's a white dude or whatever, but he could be related to that shit, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? Why he's, why he's going down. But it's like it's crazy how that's a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's who knows who these motherfuckers upset or who knows why they throwing a motherfucker to the wolves, my nigga. It's a reason they doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's because going you, talk, you talking about... Mike Jeffries. You talking about people that was rich, affluent, that was... That parted with all these people, man, people of power that parted with these people and 
These people either knew or these people either engaged. These, these, these same motherfuckers, it's a bunch of motherfuckers standing. You seen when, when uh, Clive Davis bitch ass got up out that car and they asked him about Diddy? Whole ass nigga act like he couldn't hear. Then <laughs> all that whole ass shit, who? Who? And then when he, he then the nigga, the probably it was his driver, a bodyguard, he probably uh fucking the shit out of Clive David. Uh nigga Clive David like fucking a Ken doll. Uh that nigga uh yeah, go say Diddy. He said Diddy and then Clive David just was just stayed silent and walked his bitch ass in the building. Man, all you niggas is involved in man, everybody up there is involved with that shit. Everybody up there that played a part in it, my nigga. Everybody up there that played a role in it. Everybody got their hand in it, my nigga. Everybody went in that kitchen and made a plate. Even Damn. if you all just grabbed a piece of cornbread and walked out that motherfucker. Damn. Some it's... niggas had a full plate. Some niggas just all got a piece of pecan pie. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> it says that Mike Jeffries, former CEO. Some niggas took plates to the car. <laughs> it says that Mike Jeffries, former CEO, that's crazy, former CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch, has been arrested. This happened today. Arrested uh, as long as, as well as two other people associated to him on sex trafficking. The indictment contains more than a dozen counts and alleges that between 2008 2015, Jeffries and other associates engaged in sex trafficking scheme, which they recruit men with model aspirations, and a source said, a second source also said they allegedly would engage in sex themed parties at which these prospective models were given drugs, alcohol, and Viagra, amongst other things, to perform sex acts. It sounds very similar to the Diddy shit. Man, I don't wanna hear that whole ass shit. Any <laughs> nigga. Uh, I thought they was sex trafficking bitches. I you just <laughs> sex trafficking niggas. I thought so too. So until ain't, until yeah, ain't no it. nigga, ain't no you know. If if you got if they dropped a Mickey on you, but are you still a nigga, nigga? You still need to have some kind of awareness about yourself. I I just can't even imagine a nigga. They they dropped a date rape drug on me and I sucked his dick. Nigga, that don't even sound. <laughs> nah. Under what stipulation does a nigga know he ain't got a dick in his hand? Man, you get me fucked up. I'm going to sleep. I'm, eat, I'm eating. I'm going to sleep. No matter what you put on. Under under what under what situation do a nigga know he don't got another nigga dick in his hand? Please explain to me this situation where a grown ass man is unaware that he's about to suck another nigga dick. Give me the situation, my nigga. They might got some shit out there that, that puts a nigga in a state of uh, 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 amnesia. But, I, nigga, I, they say right there on the bottle of prescription pills, shit like uh, Xanax, do not mix with alcohol. Nigga, because all it takes is one sip of alcohol and you're going blackout mode. And I I didn't do, I, I hate downers, I hate being down like that there, but I did, I went on like a Maybe two month, two month Zynax kick back in the day, back in like nine seven nine end of nine six nine seven. It wasn't long, yeah, and it wasn't no uh, peel head. You know, we'll go to the club, I'll pop a Zynax or whatever, be drinking, and still and be and be black not sometime. But never could a nigga put a dick in my hand, bitch ass nigga. <laughs> Real shit. <laughs> Even in my Black thought and like out of his state. You fuck around, get the shit shot out of you. Fuck with me, like nigga, what? Cause, uh, cause that real. Even though I'm out of it, when you say some fuck shit, that real nigga shit gonna kick in from like that spiritual shit. And nigga, what you say? <laughs> oh, I, I say, would you mind sucking a dick? <laughs> you might blow my high, and I end up choking the shit out of you to death, bitch ass nigga. And then the first thing they're gonna say, man, a nigga spazzed out on pills. <laughs> man, niggas need to go on with the bullshit. Man. Miss me with the bullshit, my nigga. Miss me with the bullshit, my nigga. This nigga brought me into this interview to Danny, make, make me have a stroke one minute and did try to bullshit and job me the next one. 
<laughs> this shit here crazy. Ain't no way. drug out there. Ain't gonna make me do that. Nick, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> oh, shit. Nigga, that was your intention. You went to that party with the intention of sucking a dick, nigga. When you walked through the door and you seen it was damn bitch in the room and you like, nigga, I thought we was here for a party. We here. Ain't no the- alcohol that could <laughs> turn me gay. <laughs> 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 nigga. Ain't nigga, no drug that can make me switch. <laughs> That crazy, my nigga. Stop it, my nigga. Uh, That's how these niggas go to the pit of tainty, my nigga, and go to fucking with boys. <laughs> nigga, was you, gay been, you was gay already, nigga. <laughs> I'm in this hole doing push-ups, trying to get to out to get to some pussy. Nigga, I was up to raping myself four, five times uh, a day at one I point, was nigga. Get off with my blanket in a tent. <laughs> nigga, I, I was jacking off so much, I had, had cut my dick, nigga, with my own hand, nigga. What the fuck is you talking about? No, I feel you though, man. Fuck That's wrong with niggas. Crazy. Niggas is crazy than a motherfucker, man. Crazy than a motherfucker. Look, we come in to make sure I get these topics in. Man, look, there's been two people on the internet that's been going crazy ever since this Diddy shit popped off. And that's Gene Deal and Jaguar Wright. How do you feel about what they're doing on the internet as soon as everything became you know what I'm saying? Well, Jaguar Wright been been pre- and Gene Deal, you know, he I said like I said on the last interview, my nigga, you watched that that whole shit take place. Now you wanna tell a story about it, my nigga. That ain't, you know, you could be telling the truth and shit, but that don't you you ain't no real nigga, cause if you was a real nigga, you wouldn't even sat there and watch that shit. How I'm a I'm not finna nigga the money. Then you'll fuck around and do some shit for some money, my nigga. Cause I'm not finna sit here and basically watch gay porn, my nigga. That's crazy. You watch gay porn for money, my nigga. And then eventually you become desensitized to the shit. Did it probably walked out the room and, and slick dick you or rubbed his cheeks against your dick to see if, if, how you react to it, nigga? When you rock up or some whole ass shit. No, my nigga, I didn't, that shit that, that Jaguar right? She's a little different. Her last interview with uh, Corey Holcomb on Fifty One Fifty. I watched that the entire thing. That was one of the best uh, little things. I, it was more linear, more it was less random. And I found out what it was. My thing with Jaguar Wright. Jaguar Wright is random as fuck. She'll be saying some shit and then she'll just throw some shit just out of left field in there. And yeah. I'm kind of a little fucked up because I do the shit too when I'm interviewing. And I didn't catch that she just, our mind, so much shit is going on in our mind while we've been interviewed. You ask a good question, we're trying to get through the question. But then we got so many different, different points of views and different ideas running through your head or some shit or uh, and what else she do she she'll throw some shit out there and she, like she it might be some real shit but her choice of words she'll give you some shit you ain't asked for that and then her choice how she phrase it but then she'll throw the shit out there and she know the connections in her mind but she you don't know the connection, so you're like, what the fuck? Like, why did she just say that? She said it because it's connected some kind of way. You just don't know how it's connected. But she know the connection, but she just threw it out there as a as another point to be made. Like, nigga, I'm telling you, uh, like she said, that's how Beanie Siegel uh, lost. The, that's why Be- that's, that cost Beanie Siegel a lung. I was like, bitch, what? But like I say, her, her her choice of words and like when she just throws shit out there, you know, but it, it was a great interview. But, you know, so I, I see Jaguar Wright in a new light. And then when she went to speaking on niggas, freedom, liberation and sovereignty and shit, I was, that she won me like a motherfucker. She spoke with some conviction and some passion. I was like, yeah, that's some real shit right there. So it's, uh, but, you know, they doing what they do, man. I don't really feel no type of way about it. like I, I you know. Do you, Motherfuckers. do you think Jaguar be making stories up or you think she's from your just just spiritually how you feel about when you listen you, to her you talk? Know, you uh, think she be making stories up or you think it's true? She say she got informants. Who, who, who's to say that who you paying for information can't be lying. But, you know, some shit like I, all I can say is some shit just sound random. But that don't mean that it ain't true. But, you know, shit sound sound crazy to us because 
we're not involved in a in a, a social circle. We don't know what it's like to hang yeah. out with folks. So when a motherfucker said this, this shit so foreign to the ear, and the concept is so crazy that you like, man, ain't no way that shit could be true. But to motherfuckers that this is our lifestyle, this is this ain't shit to us. You know they, you walk in the house and you know motherfuckers is just walking around naked and 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 fucking everywhere. First time you go in, you know you like, hey man, and you know. You might go to hollering at a little old bitch that you find jazzy, whoop de whoop. And even as the night goes on, you're less and less sensitive to everybody in this bitch walking around naked. And even though you don't like at at the at the core of your existence, like this really some shit like nigga, I ain't really fucking with this shit like this here. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if you keep on partaking and 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 being in that environment, it's just like anything else. You you know, I I was born in the ghetto, been in the ghetto all my life. So the shit that I learned in the ghettos didn't didn't seem fucked up until I went outside the ghettos. Yeah. Seeing a nigga getting his head bust wide the fuck open, that shit didn't seem wrong. It seemed justified. That nigga hit that nigga for something. But then once you go over there on the other side of the tracks and they tell you that shit is unacceptable and you trying to wrap your brain around what the fuck you mean is unacceptable. This is... This is how society is done and where I'm, where I'm at, how I was born, how I was raised. This is my understanding. So now you telling me I'm wrong and you taking me to jail for some shit that I learned as acceptable and understandable. But now you taking me to jail for it because you saying over here, you could do that shit over there. And as long as you niggas don't involve us, kill as many niggas as you want. But you bring that shit over here, nigga. You know what I'm saying? We're going to lock your ass up and we don't give a fuck you You tell us you didn't understand that that shit wasn't right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure. It sounds like an intuition thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just natural. Yeah. It, you know, but you got motherfuckers who really don't know. Who, motherfuckers who really accept circumstance as 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 religion. Well, I'm a tough nigga when, with them words, ain't I, nigga? Got <laughs> niggas that accept circumstance as religion, nigga. Yeah. I'm tough, nigga. I told you niggas ain't fucking with me, man. Ain't that one of these niggas. You niggas ain't on my level, my nigga. Like you really ain't. Thoughtfully, articulately, nothing, my nigga. You niggas really ain't fucking with me, my nigga. And then me and my nigga interviews is just every last one of them really knock it out the park. But I I, I keep giving you the you bitch ass niggas all this shit, but you niggas is just looking at it uh lackadaisical like a motherfucker, like it's just entertainment. You niggas ain't really uh, letting this shit resonate with your spirit, my nigga. Nah, for real. Man, ultimately, I feel like you're giving Jaguar right that pass. I feel like you feel like it's not. Well, well I, that Corey Holcomb or uh, 5150 show <clears throat> made me view her in a, in a different light. I'm not going to lie. Uh, everything is in a constant state of evolution. Who I was five minutes ago is not who I am right now, my nigga. I probably sat here and I, I haven't had the ability to process it, but I've probably evolved since sitting here and probably something I said at the beginning of the interview. If I think about it while I'm on the way home, I might have a different viewpoint of it because of whatever, you know, but it's not me so much giving her a pass because she don't deserve. She don't not deserve. She don't uh, need a pass from me. I'm just saying I see her in a different light through that. 5150 show interview because it was what was the main thing that she said that made you oh uh, well i told she really won me over when she went to speaking about uh black people and and okay. how we get out on each other but uh to me the interview was less chaotic than everything she's done it was more linear like it was more okay. followable to me like everything because like it was less random. It was, you know what I'm saying? It, it was from what she does with real life street stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever uh I and I don't know, I don't, you know, I really don't know because real life street stars do good good interviews. I just don't know what it it could have been anything. Sometimes it's just they was the in way, LA. She probably ain't blows, it could have been, yeah. She ain't been in LA in three years. And she's seen cause I heard her speak about seeing a, a friend that she that, that went and seen. So it could have been anything that could have you know what I'm saying? You ever heard any uh, music? 
Uh, yeah, that one song she used to have that was that was a bad motherfucker. But I've never I never checked out like that. She's a cold singer. Man. No, cause that Coca Cola commercial. She blew that shit out the water, nigga. She blew that shit out the water. Facts, facts. Yeah. Man, I'm almost out of topics, but I'm going to step back to one of our earlier topics, and I just kind of want to see how you feel about this. Um, we talked about the Fed shit earlier with Meech and the time and the discrepancies and the information that you got. <clears throat> There's a guy who's out on the internet, you know, representing, doing his thing, living his life, and that's Supreme McGriff Jr. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was just talking about me coming home and nobody celebrating Prince. And I, I gave Prince a shout out in that the 34 years to the dough. Uh, one thing, you know, I'm a realist, man. I look at everything from a real perspective. Uh, matters what Meech did or didn't do. You know what I'm saying? Because you got some people held steadfast that believe that it's all these funny little stipulations and shit and believe uh, these theories that they concocted or they didn't heard when motherfuckers is telling you that this is what the fuck it is when it comes to these people. These people only play one way. They play the same way with everybody. Nobody is the exception to the rule. They do the same thing with everybody down the line. But, you know, and that leads me to saying this. Why I originally was started. We can't take away the fact that Meech is an icon. Okay. And and I know he was mad that nobody uh, celebrated because remember they had that. This really settles that debate they had. Meech is also a more recent story. Two thousand five. That as well, but this set up settles the, the debate. You remember when they how the little nigga first became like kind of noticeable when they was talking about who was uh more richer who was the the uh most known out of Meech and supreme and he he came stood up for his, his father which is honorable you know which, which any son you know especially with a father that had such a high profile in new york you know what i'm saying let's be be real yo yo daddy wasn't big Meech, my nigga prince Ain't ain't me. Meech is it? Oh no, Prime Team. It's like the same story to me. No, nah, but they was in. That's not the same story. We talking about nationwide, and we talking about citywide. Okay. We ain't even talking about statewide. We talking about nationwide. We talking about citywide. We talking about nationwide. We talking about citywide. Y'all some bad niggas in Queens, and you wasn't even citywide. You was in Queens, B. You wasn't in Harlem. You wasn't in the Bronx. You wasn't on Staten Island. You wasn't in Brooklyn. You was in Queens. You talking about a nigga that was state to state, coast to coast. Don't compare. You know what I'm saying? Just with the stat that your daddy worked for a nigga. Meech was the top Top dog. You know what I'm saying? Kingpin Rico. Yeah. No, I feel you. I feel you. I definitely understand. Yeah, what so, you're but, uh, yeah, but, but, uh, but Prince, yeah, 34, 34 years. years. 34 years. No snitch allegations. No, yeah, that, that's, that's some honorable shit. And that, I gave, I made sure I gave him a shout out because, because, uh, young, young Supreme, he, he wasn't wrong in that saying that his, you know that that his his uncle is an honorable nigga, but nobody celebrate. But yeah, nobody celebrate. Sometimes niggas come home and don't want to be celebrated. Real shit. I, I every time I came home five times, nigga, I ain't want no motherfucking party, nigga. What the fuck am I celebrating? Losing. Yeah. That's what I'm celebrating. A loss like a motherfucker. It was he he probably didn't want to celebrate losing thirty four years. I don't know. I'm just saying, but uh, but to give him the recognition, cause why didn't you blow it up and make it? A, you you got a, a all right little platform the way you could. I don't know. I ain't been in your pay. I don't know if you. But I didn't hear you uh saying to take welcome home pictures or meet the nigga outside the motherfucking uh federal penitentiary with a prison and some or with a, with a limo and some holes or what? So what the fuck did you do? And you crying for the world to do something for the nigga? What did you do for him? 
But, you know, but he it still deserves its recognition and a, and a fucking salute like a motherfucker, a real nigga salute. I'm a fan of you as a man. Shit. Yeah, I'm a fan of you as a man. Damn. Yeah. Aside from Supreme Team, aside from any other team, aside from everything we talked about, but just looking at the shit in a pragmatic perspective, you know what I'm saying? Is it at a point in 2024 where snitching should be considered a part of the game? It's always been a part of the game since since uh, Henry Hill uh, wasn't he the first. Uh, the first documented snitch, uh, like out in the open. So right now, it's just it's mainstream. It's become uh, uh, acceptable culturally within. I say it been accepted socially. I won't say well, kind of culturally as as well. It's been accepted and and it's being acceptable. It being accepted in larger social circles. As the days progress is what that's that's the word because I, I want to frame it correctly. You know what I'm saying? I want to frame that correctly. It's being accepted more and more and more with every day we wake up. And, and, it's and that's becoming, a bad thing. Fuck. Yeah, man. It's 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 uh, it's terrible, man, because it's not integrity is out the window because, see, a lot of motherfuckers just view this from the lens of crime or from a spectrum that they don't understand. I'm viewing it from the spectrum of the erosion of integrity throughout all of society. If big me snitched, you gotta, and, and not just the snitching part, you gotta, if big me sacrifices or compromises his integrity, his manhood, what he said he stood for, He'll go a nigga over here that's not a criminal, but he still admires Big Meech. He's taking those those fact that those values and those characteristics and those personality traits with him. He like what well, she Big Meech, and he don't have to uh, do any crime. He could take it to a a, a household. He he's a husband and. It, and and he got a family and but now he feels like it's okay to compromise his integrity, his manhood over here on this front and erode this part of society because he's viewing this man as acceptable. It's a it's a greater it's a greater and broader scope of all this shit that's playing into the vein of society. Mm. That's real. That's deep. That's real. Yeah. Do you think <clears throat> this realization about snitch culture, street culture is enough to motivate the black community, especially the black youth, to finally separate itself from the criminal identity? Fuck no. That's that's they tricked us into believing that that is Pain, black. crime, trauma is our culture. That's that's our culture, like a motherfucker. Because for some reason we got to identify with it, and the more you identify with it, the 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 greater reception you receive from the masses. Like like black trauma is big business. It really is. It's a billion dollar. Be a multi-billion dollar business, black trauma, and and it's to the point that we revel in it. We, why you think the news? What does what story does the news always start out with? The worst story that they can report, nigga. And news today, seventeen people murdered. <laughs> <laughs> they start off with the worst fucking story you could ever report. Never the good news, though. That shit that I don't nobody give for. Everybody want the pain, the trauma, the hurt. Maybe it's because somebody just want to hear that somebody is more fucked up than them. So they, they don't feel alone. I don't know, man. The, the human psyche is a bad motherfucker with how we connect dots and how we uh, make things assimilate and how we view shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and trauma is real.
because I was traumatized at a real young age because of the ghetto and didn't even realize I was traumatized because I became numb to it and I accepted it. You know what I'm saying? Until you seen other shit. Until I really, I, shit, I was, when I realized I was, I, I had been traumatized, shit, maybe, shit, right before I came home this last time, so maybe about 11, I was just on my bunk, just meditating and, and, and thinking to myself. And, you know, and just analyzing shit, I spend a lot of time doing that. That's why I'm so affluent and so, that's why I'm just so tough with this shit. Because I spend a lot of time with my thoughts, you know what I'm saying? Meditating and shit. And, uh, and I realized, I was like, damn, I was traumatized by the ghettos and didn't even know it because I was born in it and, in, and so engulfed in it and saturated in it that I didn't even see nothing wrong with it. So I didn't even know I had been traumatized. And mainstream culture has always been having an asserted effort to make it seem like, yeah, it's good. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, nigga. We celebrate the uh the villain and and you know, we Scarface. Why you think Scarface is so loved and all these niggas, Nino Brown snitched like a motherfucker at the end, but nigga still nigga New Jack City, nigga, you know, uh yeah, man. That shit that we love it, man. We love it, man. We love the villain, nigga. The Joker movie grows just as much as Batman movie. What is we gonna do though, man? What are we gonna do about this shit? I don't, I really uh I I sit and contemplate or uh, answer my nigga and I've yet to come up with a feasible solution except for one motherfucking thing. And I don't even and even when I run a scenario through my mind about that, I don't see niggas winning. And then when I do imagine niggas winning, then I see the tyranny of another nigga over us. Just running back to what the fuck we just fought against. But this time it's going to be one of our own. Yeah, that's crazy. And so, you know, I don't, and maybe it's the pessimist in me. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. You know, you got some motherfuckers who are, uh, love to view the world through rose colored lenses and shit and they can see the best in man and shit but uh, I can't my nigga I, I, you know I got to I, you a bitch ass nigga before you a real ass nigga to me I got to <laughs> I mean that's 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 the safe way to approach it though. yeah yeah I got you got to show me you a real nigga yeah. you know what I'm saying but I, I can't just off the rip just you know I might kick it, kiki, kaka, but in the back of my mind, what this bitch, what angle this bitch ass nigga got? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. Before we go though, what is a what is a real nigga? Shit. Uh, by my standards, just somebody that's a person of their word, or uh, a person that cares about their name. You know, because you got a lot of niggas that don't give a fuck about their name. Niggas do fuck shit, dumb shit, stupid shit, whole shit. And, you know, your name going to always beat you to wherever you're going. So, you know, a man that gives a fuck about his name, a man that gives a fuck about his family. You know, a man that even though it's an oxymoron type shit, because I know a lot of us are, are tied into this just because a motherfucker uh, do crime does not make a nigga a criminal. Just because he grew up poor doesn't make him a real nigga. Yeah. 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 But what I mean by that is, you know, a nigga can be forced to do a crime. A nigga, nigga, when I got out the penitentiary, they give you a fit, they give you fifty dollars, and then when you get to your your uh, parole office, you get another fifty dollars. They give you a hundred dollars. And I got out and I was down to twenty dollars. I had tears in my eyes, nigga, when I was calling this motherfucker to scope some motherfucking dope. Twenty dollars worth of dope. But that's what I started with, nigga. I was down on my last I spent my last twenty from a TDC check when I came home in two thousand nine. That's tough, man. I had tears in my eyes, nigga. Using my partner phone, nigga. 
I ain't want to put that dope back in my hand because I left with with dreams and aspirations and I, I'm going to do it different this time. How do you feel now looking, let's say, starting speaking from that moment? How far do you feel like you've ascended from that moment? Well, I have ended up going back. Going back twice. So, but for, from that moment, I'm, you know, uh, did I, was, hold up, let me see, 2000. Yeah, but I ended up with, I started with, with scoring a 20 and I blew up, nigga. I blew the fuck up, nigga. That was, that was my yeah. greatest, that was my greatest run so, so in the game. From a $20 rock, you came up. And plus I was, I was homeless on top of that. Mm. But from being homeless and $20 worth of crack, you came up to like I'll, your greatest run. Yeah, that was my greatest run. That's crazy. Straight out of penitentiary. Yeah, that was my greatest run. Because you, and you cried because you knew you was going back into the game. Uh-huh. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's real, man. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, and, and now, you know, <laughs> I'm being adored because... I'll, you know, at the time when you're going through things, they might seem like the worst thing ever, but I just told somebody again, I recognize that the penitentiary saved my life several times. The penitentiary turned me, I always been a thinker and I always been articulate and I ain't never been afraid to talk, but sitting in the penitentiary in my bunk all the time just with myself and learning how to hone my thoughts with a bunch of because sometimes it's non-stop independent noise and it's just shit going on and being able to tune that shit out and really just go inside of myself and you know try to better myself because in tdc you bet they they took rehabilitation up out the title it used to be texas department of corrections and rehabilitation they took rehabilitation up out they don't even want to re rehab a nigga they don't want to rehabilitate you. They want you to come back. They took rehabilitation out of the title. It is now Texas Department of Corrupt Corrections and Justice. Getting that check and correcting your behavior. They ain't trying to correct you or rehabilitate you and, and get you right, my nigga. That's crazy, my nigga. That's crazy. So, and I, you know, every, I, I try to work on myself all the time, but I, I'm, I'm not uh, perfect and I ain't 100 with it. I fall short. I got my moments. I, uh, I might not black out to the back to the actions, but I do black out to the mindset sometimes because that's still like very much who I am. You think you'll ever be able to shake or relinquish the strain of being uh, institutionalized? No, it's, fuck no. It's, nah. it's gonna always be a part of it. That's that's just that's a part of my makeup. That's part of my story. That's part of who the fuck I am. It's part of my education. It's it's part of it is it, it, and in a good way and a bad way. Cause sometimes when I get to a tipping point, I'm able to go back inside of myself like I did in the penitentiary and cancel everything out and recenter myself. So, you know, it's it's all up to you that if in your worst time you find good in it. I honed my skills. I wrote my first book in a penitentiary. I wrote my first movie in a penitentiary. For sure. So I didn't I, I didn't waste my time. Now, if you go there and all you do is try to uh, sneak in this and sell this and do this and jack off on this and, you know, fuck around, you really... You know, and I came back, I recidivism, I was, I repeat offender, but it's never any, I don't think it's ever any nigga's intention. They wake up, I feel like going to jail today, but you do, <laughs> you do grading your chances when, you know, especially in that when that's all the fuck you involve and indulge yourself. Nigga don't read a book, a nigga just want to rock around trying to be fly in icy whites all day and you brush your hair, got a brush, I mean, nigga ain't trying to. Beside niggas just can't wait to get back to the street so I could do. I got it this time. Nigga, I got it figured out. Nigga, you've been sitting still 
for three, four years. Nigga, the world been evolving. That same shit you, you think and the same shit you did when you got locked up. Them law got to hold the way of, of busting niggas now. Yeah, for real. You don't even know about it. You yeah, ain't even been out here to hear about it. Yeah, but as soon as your feet hit the concrete, nigga, you off and running. Real shit, man. Man, niggas got to get it together, man. Man, when you went to prison your first time as a young nigga, you know what I'm saying, and you get in that motherfucker, you see all the wild shit. Do you remember any OGs that that maybe attached you and gave you some some good game? And I had it before I went. I was conditioned for it. My nigga, my environment prepared me for it. Yeah. Cause every nigga in my from my hood and from especially from the ghetto every nigga went to the penitentiary it was like a rite of passage it was down there something to be proud of nigga go to the penitentiary and come home a real nigga yeah you know what i'm saying go in and go in real come out real nigga yeah you got you got them stripes and you got that salute from the streets nigga but nah, I was prepared for it, nigga. I've, I've been knowing about the penitentiary since I was a little bitty nigga. Uncle them tell nigga don't shit. I was nine, ten maybe nine or ten with my uncle nigga. You when you get in now, he didn't even tell me if you ever go, nigga. When you get in now, that's crazy. Damn, I just not thought about that. See, I tell you, it's I'm in a constant state of evolution. I never even even thought about that. And had a chance to process that. That's that part of that trauma. It's crazy. I want to ask you this: At any point throughout all of your times of being com uh, incarcerated, have you ever experienced truly what they call a peace of mind while you're in? Yeah, fuck yeah. Now yeah, I also yeah. want to ask you because uh, uh, one of the COs told me one time, he said, "Nigga, you walk around like you ain't even locked up." I told him I ain't. My body locked up, but my mind is, is free as fuck, my nigga. Is it easier to and I, and I and, and knowing that I also, you know, I'm, I'm guilty for what the fuck I'm in here for, so I, I'm at peace with it. I, I, I done that, and they, they caught me. That's how the game is set up, nigga. Cat and mouse, they caught me. I, give me my time, nigga. I'm, I'm good with it. I, you know, the stress is... You know, when, when they trying to give you some time and you trying to fight them that way. But once I, once a nigga sign for the time, nigga, you walk back to the to your cell in the county, nigga, lay down, nigga, you probably sleep better than you slept, you know, on the streets, nigga. A lot of times, nigga, find a lot of peace. You see them niggas come in the county, dope fiend niggas, man, them niggas be hood the fuck out, man. Them niggas you think being on the streets ain't peace for everybody. No, that's, and that's my question. Is it easier to find peace on the street, peace of mind on the streets, or incarcerated? For me, I'm I'm at a, a I try to remain at a constant uh, state of peace to the best of my ability. But you know, I experience it, I, and I can honestly say I experience it equally. Cause shit, I'm straight. I got bills, my nigga. Yeah. Mother call it the free world, but ain't shit free out here, my nigga. Yeah. You ain't even free, nigga. You belong to the, You think you free? Try to leave this motherfucker. Go to another country without a passport. Everybody, everybody, everybody is a slave to something. Ain't nobody free, my nigga. Uh, you free in the motherfucking penitentiary, nigga. You don't know no rent, no water bill, no light bill, no none of that whole ass shit. No food bill. Shit. Uh, I only ask that because as a young man, the first time I ever experienced real peace of mind was in incarcerated, and then. When I got free, I was able to take that into the free world. So yeah. It shit's crazy. Life is a motherfucker. Yeah. It, it, like I say, man, it, it, just what you are, you got to constantly work on yourself, man. That you got to try to find a time. Every day I go to the gym, my nigga. I work on myself. I work on myself. I, now, I, the last, I've I been hitting the track all summer, but I was this within the last shit. Like three weeks, man, I done ramped it, man. The other Saturday for last, I done 13 miles. Yeah. Man, it's, it's hard out here. It's hard out here, man. Yeah, it's, it's hard for everybody, you know. It's hard for everybody. That's why I don't nobody uh, give a fuck about your excuses or none of that shit because everybody have it hard, nigga. He, believe it or not, Bill Gates got it hard, nigga. He, just because he got all that money, nigga, he got to try to keep it. He got to. Try to play guard on everybody. Everybody got their own struggles, you know. 
There's some are just on a grander, what seems like a grander scale because she, uh, be getting kicked out of my house is treacherous. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> tragic, nigga. So everybody got their own little shit they going through, man. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Man, shit, I hate to say it, we almost at the end, but I, I want to get some insight, you know, some shit before we go, man. I always got to make sure I get the right questions because, man, you be talking that shit. But before I get to that, I want to, you know, get to what you got going on new. Uh, you do movies. Yeah. You do movies. Yeah. Yeah. We all uh, shout out to Slip Thug, Dre, the whole Boss Life movement, and everybody involved in the movie Double Double Cup. Uh, it's a, a hog life. It's a Boss Life, excuse me, Boss Life Entertainment Slim, film. Slim Thug. Slim Thug. Company. Yeah. And uh, the movie, the trailer, where the trailer isn't out. The, uh, a few people are privy to seeing it. They don't want, you can show it to somebody. They just don't want anybody to have access to it. Uh, as I showed you the, the trailer, but you yeah, know, I, seen, I can't. I seen the behind the scenes shit, shit fire. Yeah. And I, but I can't give it to you to show the motherfucker, but yeah. I can let you see it. You we know speaking on it though. Yeah. And, uh, it looked good, man. A trailer, you know, and I was only there for the day I was there to do my shit. But the trailer looks phenomenal, man. And I, I'm getting a lot of everybody that see it got positive shit. And I, I've I've had a few people say it gives them the feel of Friday when they the first Friday, like they like, man, I want to see this motherfucker. This remind me kind of remind me of Friday. You know, I got that a few times. So I'm like, damn, that's crazy. But uh, the movie looked good, man. And uh, they the expected release date is. January 2025, they set up a, a, a premiere, a preview in Dallas, November 16th and 17th. And I don't know, they doing one here in the city too. I just haven't been uh, given any date or any uh, little window of time what they looking at to do it in. But yeah, so yeah, y'all just be on the lookout for Double Cup, man. They got a... a the Houston All Stars, like a motherfucker now. That's yeah. dope. So um, this is actually your second movie. Uh, third actually. Okay. I got. I'm on day to day on on YouTube. Okay. I gotta look that up. So you the movie I thought was your first was Fight Boy. Nah, I was on day to day. Okay. Fight Boy is on Tubi. Yeah, Fight Boy on Tubi. Fight Boy. Day to day. Day to day is a YouTube movie. Okay. That niggas just shot in the hood like on some pull up, get it in type shit. So who put that together? Oh, I can't remember his name, but shout out to my little bro Deuce. He the one. Deuce was uh, a big part of that. Deuce, uh, Doctor Deuce, the barber. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. But he was a he the one who called me out. He had a lot to do with that. I can't remember the little cat who uh, filmed it and shit. But yeah, I was a part of day to day, and it, it's on YouTube. And that motherfucker got a whole bunch of views. It's, that motherfucker got like three million views or some shit like that. Y'all check that out, man. Yeah. So Double Cup will be your third movie. Mm hmm For sure. And then after Double Cup dropped, I wrote a movie. I wrote a spinoff of Double Cup because I'm playing the manager of Burns, both manager slash owner. You feel like uh, you got a big part in Double Cup? Nah, uh, uh, but everybody say I got the most impactful part. Mm, okay. Okay. You no. Know. Yeah. Like, yeah, they say smack. What what the exact words was? Smack stole the movie from everybody. That was the exact words, and that's that's no cap or nothing. That's coming from coming from them. I just wanted to come through and just you know do get the best performance that I could give and try to you know do something memorable. Yeah. Cause I know that's that's where it's at, man. You got to have something memorable. You gotta but they was like, man, you jump off the screen in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause so, Fight Boy was good, but they wanted me to play Fight Boy a little more reserved and middle of the road. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I got to be, you know, you didn't get extra. Thing. Yeah, I got to be extra in and in, in double cup. Oh, they let you they let you go. <laughs> yeah, I, they, I, I wrote everything. They gave the green, room, scene, green light. <laughs> yeah, my scene. I, I wrote that. They okay. they told they brought me there and they say we filming here and they let me. They allowed me to write 
everything that transpired with me right there on the spot in my head. And I so just how told. How did that feel? How did that feel? I, right? I write movies, man. What yeah, you talking so about? So it wasn't. No, nah, it wasn't. Like, you I, felt like it was a time that you was deserving of. Fuck yeah. It was your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, every, everything I get, I'm deserving of. Uh, good or bad, because the universe say so. So, okay, from a rapper to a commentarian to a social media influencer to a Houston, Texas icon to an actor, do you feel like acting is your calling? Uh, I love it. I like it. You think uh, so? Because I see a trend. Yeah, well, I, I never, they, people been telling me to be an actor for the long man, you need to, but that just never was my, my thing, you know. Well, actually, I got to take that back. Uh, this is my fourth movie. Fight Boy is my third movie. Day to Day is my second movie. My first movie was a porn, a porno with, with acting like. <laughs> we don't know nothing about that. So you was doing pornos back in the day? I done a porno for You was on the uh, George Floyd? <laughs> Uh, I done a porno with that nigga Agni Life. He ain't put it out. Agni though. Life? Yeah, Agni Life. My nigga Agni Life. You don't know Agni Life? Slab Soldier? Nah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah Slab yeah. Soldier. Agni That's Life. crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. I killed that out with that dick, nigga. I was trying to kill that. <laughs> and that nigga, might be a good thing that never came out because it. Nah, I, 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 I keep telling him to find the motherfucker and, and drop that motherfucker. I was trying to kill that. Oh, he just smacked. Smack, break. I mean, cut, cut, nigga. He say, God damn, nigga, you about to kill that hoe. I've got that whole head all between the cushions. Man. He say, man, the shit's supposed to look. It got to have a certain look. Man, I, nigga, you just called me to kill this hoe with that dick, nigga. And that's what I come to do, nigga. I ain't all the angles and all that shit. You worry about that, Kate. <laughs> that's wild, man. Here I am trying to promote your, your authentic acting career. And you're a porn star the whole time, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can get the tape, cake ass nigga. No Diddy, nigga. Go find the tape, nigga. Diddy would have found the tape by now, nigga. Man, we gonna comment section, man. Anybody watching this, y'all go find that shit. No, nah, Agony Life got it. Ain't nowhere to find. He got a big ass storage unit full of tapes, man. That's crazy. Cause he he was shooting movies and videos, and you remember the fifty fifty twin DVD? Yeah. That's he shot that with fifty okay. fifty twin. Yeah, okay. fifty fifty twin DVD. I fucks with fifty. That was my nigga. Yeah, dude fifty my man. nigga, man. But uh yeah, Agony Life. So he got a whole bunch of shit going on. I told a nigga, nigga, if you you drop the tape, nigga, going platinum in the ghetto, nigga. <laughs> I ain't fucked up about it. Order bitches, if you go down on my Twitter, you gotta go way down. I put it up while I killed the hoe with that dick. Uh but it's it's way down now. Would you ever get back into the porn game? Seeing how OnlyFans and nah, all this shit. Nah, I ain't not. Uh, I, I beat the bitch back up on, on camera. Yeah, I kill a bitch with that dick. If I wouldn't try yeah, to be gotta, a porn actor. Yeah, yeah, you gotta But I mean, once you get in the game, I feel like you out there. Nah, I, I, dick, I'm already out there. Uh, if a nigga be like, smack, I'll give you $100,000, come kill this hoe with that dick. 100000 I'm just, just, okay. uh, just a random number, my nigga. Uh, yeah, I'ma kill that hoe. Now some hoes I might kill for free. That Tiana Trump hoe, I wanna put that dick on that Tiana mm. Trump. Man, I wanna fuck you. Like for real. Bitch, fuck all of the pleasantries and all that. You do what you do, I do what I do, fucking bitch. We ain't even gotta pretend like bitch, I wanna kill you with that dick, fucking bitch. Man, that bitch that boy. That bitch is sexy to me for some reason, nigga. I really would uh I really want a threesome with her and bundles of Britney. <laughs> Hey, there you have it. Uh, let me see, cause you know I interviewed a lot of I interviewed porn stars before, but I'm just I think it's like HTX Angels or some all the all the people that's doing that type of Smackwater say he 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 doing he doing you know yeah yeah he's book he open for bookings <laughs> <laughs> yeah bitch yeah I'll hit me up man. come on with but I can't man I can't I ain't fucked up about it nigga I ain't fucked up about it. I, I ain't fucked up about it. And what did this nigga ask me about what I got? What else I got going on? Man? You know, nigga hit and we we just all over the motherfucking place. Now this uh, interview got to be over two hours, my nigga. Over. Uh, what else I got going? I got something else going on. But check this though. Have you seen the previews for the reboot of Friday? Because mm -mm. I remember you said your movie is similar to Friday, but Ice Cube com confirms. That the reboot of Friday is coming soon. The last Friday. The last Friday. Do you cool. think that's a good look? Uh, possibly if it's a, if it's a good script. Yeah. If it's a good, I, cause I wrote the shit when I was in the penitentiary. I didn't. Yeah, you I wrote, wrote the last Friday. Uh huh. I wrote the last Friday. 
Man, you might, you might I got, get oh, I got it. I got it in my spot. I I got it in my phone. I got. I wrote it. Uh, it's all the way scripted out. Yeah, I got a last five, but uh, my shit would have to be changed because it it, it uh, included Pops and Debo and who else died? Damn. Yeah, and because my shit was good too. I had a good ass, a good ass uh script and a good ass story. Was, I had a good. I, I was able to tie everybody from all the other front. Okay, but not to leak it though. But if Friday was gonna be the last Friday, we know how Debo ended up in the first Friday. We know how Craig and Day Day ended up in. We know how all the Fridays ended up. How would the last Friday supposed to end from your eyes? From a from a screenwriter. The one the one that I wrote. The 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 premise of the one I wrote was that Craig and they the uh Brothers Barbecue was expanded. It had blew up and they was expanding. So the daddies was giving Craig them one of the Craig and, and Day Day one of the stores. And Craig and Day Day also moved right next door to his mama and daddy in Stanley House. Mm. And the niggas was throwing a, a a a house a housewarming party, and everybody from all that's how all the Friday and the, all the, everybody tied in because they they went back to Rancho Cucamonga, ran into the essays, and the essays was chasing him, and uh, he had flyers in his hand, and that's how the essays found out where the party was. Uh, Debo, it's in his hood. Uh, Dan, I, Damon was. Uh, Still trying to, who was Damon? Some how did I tie him in? I know him and uh, Debo end up getting into it. End up getting into it at the party and shit. Everybody ended up at the party. Even I even uh, brought uh, Ricky Smiley back because Damn. the uh when when the movers because Craig and they they sent some movers to their house to move for them while they was at the barbecue spot and the movers. End up finding some weed and they smoke while they after they didn't loaded the truck up, they in there smoking and Ricky Smiley see the truck and the truck got the fucking keys in it and he jump in the truck and steal they shit. And in the end, he come back like trying to he see the flies and he trying to sell some shit to for motherfuckers because they go into a housewarming and they might have forgot a gift. So he going to try to see if he could, and they say, nigga, that's our shit. And they end up, yeah, I had tied everybody back in, man. I like it. I love it, though, yeah. man. Uh, man, I think you should keep up that shit, man. I, and I know it's going to be more movies. movies. But for that Friday shit, I, one thing I didn't hear was, is we bringing Smokey back. Yeah, he was brought back. How would you tie in Smokey? I, uh, he had just got out of rehab, and uh, he, because see, in the movie, they fucked around and uh they they dumbass start putting weed in the motherfucking uh in the barbecue sauce. Damn. And that's you know, and when smoking he 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 done been to rehab and now he come back and he eating some eating some uh barbecue and a nigga twitch and he like, you know what I'm saying? He only twitched when he when he uh tweaked out. <laughs> he still got the the twitch. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I brought him back. And even at the end, even though he said he didn't smoke no weed in my script, I said they was after all this crazy shit happened, because you know all that shit always.